Hey guys, what's going on? Solo here. So I've been getting a couple questions about the keys rig that I'm currently using, and I thought it'd be helpful just to make a video breaking down what's going on and why I made the choices that I did in designing it. So if you're newer to playing keys, I think this video will be incredibly helpful for you. Um, just getting ideas about what you will or will not want to do. And if you are an experienced keyboard player and you know what you're doing, awesome, that's that's great. Uh, join me in helping people out in the comments down below because I'm sure there'll, there'll probably be a couple questions. So when you're making a keys rig, especially in like the church world and the worship world, there are kind of a couple different categories that you can kind of go down. There's the physical keyboard route, so things like stage pianos, Nords, that sort of thing. I've played a lot of those, and I think they're really, really good at, at specific things. Um, there is like the full MIDI route, so doing something like Main Stage or Ableton and, and then playing all of your plugins that way. There are incorporating analog synths into that workflow, which is super fun. Um, and then you can run stuff through pedals, um, and or you can do a kind of combination of all of those and make sort of a hybrid setup that has a little bit of everything and it grows into this huge monster thing or you can keep it really simple. With all those options there, I had a couple goals that I wanted to make sure that I was able to do. And then it was about just picking the right tools to accomplish those goals. So for me, a huge goal is the ability to flow. So the ability to just if we're in a small section, being able to naturally get to a big section, being able to naturally come down, to naturally build up, whatever. Like, it's really important for me as a keys player to handle those transitions really organically. Because a lot of times if we don't have a lot of backing tracks or anything, it's gonna largely be up to keys and, and maybe electric guitars a little bit too, to kind of provide the meat of the mix, you know, of what's gonna allow those things to get big or small. So it was important for me to be able to have that flexibility. Um, another goal was being able to transition between keys really effectively. So if we're going from G to A or whatever, I want to be able to very quickly kind of establish that key in a natural way that just kind of sets the tone as, hey, we're here now, we're in this new key not in a super distracting, like brute force, duh, bah, just shifting it, but in a way that just felt natural to, okay, we're setting the scene, we're somewhere else now. That was a big goal. Um, being able to do high energy things. So being able to have all these like, you know, really sweet, tender moments and flexible flow things and key change things. And also being able to go somewhere very exciting with it. And I needed to be able to do that right away. I also needed to be able to play specific sounds. So if there's a song that has a very specific patch or a very specific starting sound, I needed to be able to do that. So I needed some sort of MIDI element in there to be able to do those things. And I think one of the most important things is it needed to be simple to set up. Uh, we just finished our student conference called Movement Conference. Uh, it's one of the biggest things we do as a church and it's a ton of fun. Uh, we go in this rodeo arena and we set up this giant stage and we bring in all these artists and it's awesome, it's amazing. Uh, if, if you're a student, you should absolutely come. Uh, it's great, but that's beside the point. It needed to be simple to set up. We're loading in and loading out very quickly. So I needed to be able to have something that I could just set down and give two XLRs to front of house and they're good to go. So with all those goals in there, the rig that I came up with was main stage mainly. And then I, uh, I used my Rev2 going into main stage just through audio inputs, passing that through my pedals into front of house. Also, I forgot to mention gear wise, I'm using that simple little Focusrite Scarlet interface that literally everybody has. Um, it's totally fine for me. Uh, it's got two inputs, it's perfect for profit and then I can just go stereo out of that into the pedals. So the first pedal is the mood which has a stereo input but it's a single TRS jack. So in order to get into that what I do is use a, a stereo TRS to dual TS cable, those little Y splitters and uh, it, it works great. They're weirdly expensive. I don't know why. It's like 
$20 on Sweetwater for this like one cable. So yeah, if you have a guitar player friend that can solder um, and you can convince him to make you a couple of them, that's great. They're, they're simple to make. They're not really that complicated. I don't know why they're expensive. But anyways, just wanted to add that that's how I'm actually getting from main stage into the pedals. One of the main benefits of doing things that way is it just gives it a lot of consistency when I'm switching between sounds or when I'm playing the analog synth and I need to then very quickly go to a different type of synth. I have a lot of options just with the pedals for kind of helping smooth that transition, whether it's just some reverb or some looping stuff or whatever. It just really helps kind of bring everything together. And on the software side, all of my sounds, I, I mainly have, I think like five sounds. I didn't have that many. Um, and you know, we're, we're playing a lot of songs in, in this conference, um, you know, multiple days, big sets. And, but you know, I, I feel like you don't really need that many sounds to keep it interesting. I think I have like three pianos. So one that's very normal, one that is like very soft and intimate, and one that's more aggressive. It's like, what, what other pianos do you need? You have three, like that's already kind of a lot. I'm kind of looking for like ways to simplify the setup and give me less options. I mean, with the pedal board and an analog synth and all your plugins, you have so many knobs, like I'm kind of looking for less things, you know. So I've got my pianos, I've got uh, my MIDI pad that I programmed, but honestly I'm using the Rev2 for most of the pads, and that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a couple specific sounds where it's like, oh, the sound for this song is a very specific type of keyboard sound, so I'll just have that on a program change, but most of the time I'm in that my main program. It's just program one, and it has couple pianos and it's got a couple synths and just I just put them on faders on my MIDI controller and I'm just in that same program just messing with volumes when I need it. The Prophet's just always running, it's just always on. If I need it, I can just reach over and play and know that it's going through that same chain. I can go into the software side of things in, in another video if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. Uh, but for this video, I thought it'd be helpful just to go through these pedals and kind of explain why I chose them, what I use them for. Um, and so hopefully that gives you an idea for if they might be right for you or not. Let me pull up a patch here and we'll kind of show what's going on. So here are the three pedals that are mainly important for kind of what I'm playing through. These are what I'm actually messing with the most. Uh, there's also a night sky at the end of the chain, but honestly, I'm, I'm not really using it to its full extent. I'm, I basically had just a couple presets that I'll switch between. Most of the heavy lifting is done from these guys. So I'll just kind of play a little bit and kind of show uh, what it sounds like, and then I'll start to go through and explain what each of them is doing. So you get the idea. There's a lot of different kind of layers and looping things, and I'm pushing the effects probably a little bit more uh, or a lot more than I would normally, um, just so you can hear kind of the fun stuff of what's going on. But yeah, that's that's the basic idea. So now I want to go through and kind of show what each of these pedals is doing to create that layer of sound. Honestly, each one of these pedals probably deserves its own full length video. They just do so much. But for now, for the sake of time, I'm just going to show what I'm using them for in this sound specifically. So first one, the mood. Now this guy is uh, amazing. <laughs> I, I think this is, if I had to only have one pedal, I, I would use the mood. I've, I've done um, sets where I have just the mood as the only pedal and it still sounds amazing. It still sounds great. So uh, what I'm using it for is two things. I'm using it first for an octave up reversed delay. So I have here just a, a normal piano. Beautiful. And now I'm just gonna use this octave up. Let me really boost this so you can hear it. Yeah, octave up delays are just kinda, especially octave up reverse delays are 
that just always work. They always feel good. They get out of the way what you're playing, but they add some rhythmic interest. And yeah, they're, they're just amazing. Um, and it's, a it's important to note too, this is not a shimmer. So the octave up doesn't continue to build up and get gross and nasty. Um, it's just a flat octave. So uh, really helpful, really useful. It sounds awesome. So this is kind of like an always on thing. Very rarely will I ever turn this off. I'm Unless it's like a super dry moment where it just needs a piano, then I'll turn it off. But most of the time, I'm always kind of having this on in the background a little bit. The next thing I use the mood for is the looper. I love the looper and just kind of making um, these atmospheres and these kind of background things. This is the main driver of that. So um, I'll just kind of start recording, play some stuff in. Bump it up an octave. So that's the mood. It's awesome. It's amazing. You should get one. They're great. Um, especially the newer versions are stereo, which means I can actually use it as part of the setup now. So the generation loss I'm kind of using for just like this vintage E. You know, kind of really thins it out and focuses it with that kind of tape sort of thing. Um, I also really like using the tape stop effect. So if I build up a loop in the mood, just very quickly. Okay, so I've got something going in the mood. I can then... tape stop it down, and then if I turn the pedal off, it immediately comes back. And if I turn it on again, it, the tape is stopped, so it's muted. So if I turn the tape stop off, it'll then come up. And it even works when it's off too, so I can stop the tape it's going to spin down to be muted. Bring it up again. So depending on what you're doing, this can be really helpful for like, if you're uh, building up and there's like a, you know, a section where everything kind of breaks down and then goes into a really big chorus. I can have a lot of stuff going on. Chorus. It's just a really nice way to kind of introduce some really dramatic tension and then immediately take it away. Um, so I, I use that effect a lot. I think it's really fun, especially on more like upbeat songs. It's really cool. Uh, the next guy, the Microcosm. Now this um, is doing a ton too. So let me turn this off. Uh, this can do a whole lot of stuff. What I mainly like using it for are the interrupt modes. So you give it a tempo either by tapping it in or by um, giving it clock. And I, I would prefer getting clock from, you know, whoever's running playback. Um, if that's me, then that's super easy. Um, but if not, then I can just tap it in and it's close enough and it's fine. You know, for this sort of style where things are kind of loose, I'm okay if it's not completely on the grid. If it's close enough, that's kind of fine. So this is what it sounds like. I'm going to turn it up so you can kind of really hear what it's doing. So all those little kind of plinky sounds, you know, that it's just taking what I'm playing and remixing it, doubling it, halfing it, pitching it up, pitching it down, doing all sorts of random stuff. Um, but it's based off of what I'm giving it. So it's really different every time. The way that the hologram microcosm and the mood interact with each other is really, really cool. So 
as I'm having this be a loop, and this is constantly doing things, it's feeding the microcosm constantly different sounds. The microcosm is also randomly messing with those sounds. And also, if I'm running Generation Loss 2 and just having it subtly move the pitch around, now you have these, like, it's never, ever, ever the same. So you can have this loop infinitely, and it's always going to be different. It's never going to be the exact same thing. So here's an example of these two working together in a really interesting way. So I'm just going to feed this uh, some notes here. Add some reverb. So super cool, and uh, I mean, this is all just one piano with no effects on it that's that's making all this stuff. So it sounds completely different, you know, depending on what you're feeding it. So that's with just one piano. Um, here's what it sounds like with my main sound. So I've got like some synths going, I've got some reversed things, I've got some strings, and um, all those layers put together end up sounding like this. So there you go, hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions about how this stuff works or what's going on. I'm, I, I love talking about this stuff and helping people. So um, please reach out to me, get in touch with me, ask me questions, I will totally respond to you. Um, and if you wanna know more about the software side of things, the plugins that I'm using, let me know too and I'll, I'll make a video about that going through what's going on there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna support me or the channel, you can uh, like, you can subscribe, I have a newsletter where I'll email out things from time to time and you can get some free sounds and stuff that way. I also teach classes on Skillshare, so you can get that link in the description and you can get a free month and you can learn some stuff from me there. Lastly, if you wanna know more about that movement conference that I mentioned in the beginning, it's really, really incredible and signups are happening right now. You can go to mvmnt24.com. That link's in the description as well and you can register there. Um, it's gonna be super, super cool. We haven't announced any of the artists yet, but um, you're going to want to be there. <laughs> it's gonna be very, very cool. So um, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Solo Ray, I'll see you next time.